here with Vidal O'Reilly. Uh, yep. Vidal, uh, unfortunate news, you were looking forward to making your debut on the, as a member of the Mayweather Promotions on December 28th. Yeah. Of course, already three knows as a professional. Unfortunately, uh, you decided that it's in your best interest to pull out of the fight at this time. Uh, what can you tell us about this? Um, you know, it's, 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 it's unfortunate because you know, we just had the whole thing with JJ, you know, and it was like, okay, he had his fight. I was scheduled to have mine directly after him. And these things happen, you know. Um, in the gym, I was looking good. You know, sparring was looking good, pads are sharp. Like, I honestly felt like I've been performing my best boxing performances in a long time this camp. But, you know, um, something occurred. You know, it was a minor injury on, on the grand scheme of things, but the team around me just said it's not worth the risk. You know, there's a lot of big nights that we plan to have in my career. And sometimes these little things, you don't listen to your body, turn into big things. And then we end up spending six months out, a year out. Whereas now it's just a couple months just to rehab, sort out some of the muscle tightness that I have and move forward from there. I know you've been trying to push through it because uh, this was very important to you to- uh... Yeah, big, like maybe with promotions debut, so. So, so yeah, how, how difficult was this decision to come by? I know up, up till you know, yesterday, as far as I knew, or two days ago, you, you had still planned on, on going through this. So how hard was the decision to make to, to pull out? For me, it was like, I want to fight regardless because I'm just a fighter. So I've had injuries, you know, and little minor things my whole career, and I've always worked through them, but they never disappear. And that's the lesson that I've learned this time is if something's minor, tackle it and then move on because you know something like that the thing that i felt you know is like i would fight with it i personally would fight with it but then i've done that multiple times before and it still comes back so it's a time where it's like sort out the issue then get back in the ring but yeah it's it's frustrating you know we, we was excited a lot of eyes were going to be on it you know we had a big announcement public workout everything you know it's a bit you feel like you let everybody down but you know, ultimately, I'll be letting myself down if I further injure myself. And fighters like to fight, but is that good? why it's good for you to have uh, people around you that maybe look out for you, uh, whereas you might have just gone in. And yeah, fight. that's the that's the you know that's the thing about having a team is um, you make decisions as a collective, and I haven't always you know done that. I've always, sometimes I've just I've had the team and then just not listened. And ultimately, I'm the one that ends up in pain. So this time, it's just being wise, um, taking a minor, minor time out the ring. Obviously, I haven't boxed since Dubai, but I didn't feel that this camp. I felt sharp. I felt like I've been active. So a um, couple more months won't hurt, and then hopefully we get on a show that's at the end of February. Uh, before we got on camera, you said something about uh, wanting to show everybody that you know, you're more than just a YouTube Yeah, boxer. Is you that know, kind of aggravating you know, of course, the way a bit? Of course, because, you know, I'm, in amateur boxing, it's just about winning. It's just like, regardless of performance, you win, great. The professionals, is a, you know, it's a business. It's, a, it's, a, it's about marketing. It's about how I come across to the public and to the world. So I, I could go in there and beat the guy that was, I was scheduled to fight with a bad back. But am I going to be him in the fashion that I want to be him in? That the world would like to see me win? Probably not. So why take the um, why take the risk and why take the, take the chance? You know, when I get in the ring, I want to be 100%. I want to show people the boxing ability that I have to its fullest. And if I can't do that, then I'm not going to do it. Going off what you said there, do you think that boxing's kind of evolved where it doesn't matter if you just win anymore it's how you look while winning it's definitely about how you look um it's always been that way you know the stars of the sport always win in great fashion they always talk well you know there's many world champions and great fighters but not everybody knows them but being winning in emphatic fashion you know the fighters that predict their victories and what round and you know insult their opponent down to the ground and then deliver those are the people that we remember and those are the people that uh, engage with the community that don't even watch boxing. And I'm already in that community in a way because of my YouTube channel and everything like that. But I'm trying to establish that in the ring. So I want to be exciting. I want to provide, you know, show people my skill, 
But I want to also keep that that element of yeah, this guy's devastating. You know, I boxed well in Dubai. We had a nice four round fight, last minute change of opponent. And at cruiserweight, as much as it's a good boxing performance, people don't want to see that. You know, people want to see power. They want to see the knockouts. And I can provide both. If I can't, if I don't feel like my body can do both on that night, I won't perform. I won't fight. All right. So what's the the plan going forward here then? So uh, we have you know another YouTube fight in the in the works, which got announced today between Jake Paul and. Uh, Gib, it just seems like these pools haunt me, but um, I'm going to train Gib for that fight, which, um, you know, is another one of the responsibilities that I have out there, and make sure we defeat this brother like we did the other one, and then whilst that's happening, keep rehabbing, keep going through my um, physio sessions, um, you know, I'll still do a little bit of work with Jeff as well, but mainly work with my physio, work with Coach Larry, just to change my training plan to fit my body because my body is different to anybody else that they've worked with before. So it's just about adjusting the game plan for me. Um, and then as soon as Gibbs done, come back to Vegas from Miami and start camp again. And we'll, you know, end of February, I'm very confident I'm gonna have an outstanding performance. All right, so going forward, so, so you all have been in the ring for quite a while. If you yeah, it would have been, like yeah, it would have been a little, what, Eight months, five so, eight months. So what kind of, you know, health permitting, what kind of schedule are you looking forward in 2020? Well, I have a feeling I'll be very active, um, which I want to be as well. You know, we missed this fight at the end of the year, so we have to make at least make up for this one, plus the ones we already have planned. Uh, and I will be active, you know. This, me taking this fight off will contribute to me being more active because my body will be able to keep up more and you know sustain more um of camp life so uh yeah exciting 2020 we'll, let's let me throw in, let's throw out maybe four or five fights let's try and get four or five fights well we're uh sorry i had to pull out of this one we're looking forward to you know seeing you back in the ring next year yeah, uh when you, you see anything about ksi or anything uh, <laughs> <laughs> well jj is just pissed he had to cancel his flight to come and watch me uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he said to me well, next time I'll wait till the week before till I book my <laughs> flight. Since you made me cancel, I was like, oh, sorry, man. But it happens. Things happen. Yeah. All right, man. Speed your recovery and happy holidays to you. Thank you. And you too.